Uh, two phrases, one each of you have used. Sally, you made this distinction a couple times between the brain and the mind. And Scott, you used the phrase, the ghost in the machine. And so I want to, when you are making a distinction between the brain and the mind, what exactly does the mind have that the brain doesn't? Is it a ghost? Is it God? Is mm -hmm. it something else? Mm -hmm. I can tackle yeah. that. I, um, so I think it is probably the case, but I don't know for sure, that the brain and the mind are addressing very similar kinds of properties but at different levels of explanation. So psychologists, philosophers, neuroscientists talk about emergent properties, and that's sort of what we're talking about here, that there may very well be, I don't think we know for sure, but there may very well be certain emergent properties, certain psychological traits, motives, thoughts, emotions, that come out of neural functioning that are not predictable from the neural functioning itself. And I think that is the argument that we make for a domain of mind. I wouldn't think of it as a ghost in the machine, but, um, but a domain of, of mind that's separate from that of, of brain. And the, the analogy that's often used is sort of the distinction between software and, and hardware. If you have a problem with your Microsoft Word program, let's say you get delivered a uh, a bum version of your Microsoft Word program or someone comes up with a, a new version next year and, and it does some weird things, starts punctuating things wrong, and um, you're not going to open up your computer with a screwdriver and start figuring stuff out and trying to replace the transistors. It's not going to do anything and, um, because it's a software problem. And I, I, many of us, myself included, suspect that a lot of psychological problems, psychological disorders, are in part, certainly, there's no question there are hardware problems that can give rise to, to metal disorders, but there are also issues of, of learning, uh, cultural factors, social factors that contribute to mental illness that m probably do not stem strictly from hardware problems. And in that respect, a focus on the brain level of analysis can be worse than useless because it can distract us away from where some of the core problems may lie. So is it also a proper metaphor that Beethoven wrote individual notes and those are the neurons, but the emotional effect of a symphony is an emergent property out of the relationship. Well, that's a great example, and, and some people use that example too, that one, one could look at Beethoven's Ninth Symphony note by note and, and look at every single interaction among every single note. It's not going to get us anywhere. There's, there's a level of meaning and understanding and, and the, Im the emotional impact on the listener that may never be reducible strictly in terms of its subcomponents. Admittedly, there is a lively debate about this. There are some philosophers who would disagree with me on this. But the one thing I don't think we can disagree on is that we are nowhere near a full explanatory reduction of the mind to the brain. We're, nowhere, we're maybe a few thousand years away at, at best.